I would, I would like also to thank the organizers for inviting me to talk about chemical reactivity or ultra cold polar molecules. So, uh, coldest uh, man made molecules were created for uh, using two photon, a photo, uh, two color photo association. Uh, from uh, alkali metal atoms, which uh, form the uh, first column of periodic table. And these molecules are created uh, in the uh, lowest uh, vibrational, rotational, and hyperfine states of either X a ground state, single sigma molecule, or uh, uh, for the lowest uh, triplet sigma molecule uh, state. So we would expect that such a reduction of kinetic energy of molecule, like a nine order of magnitude, uh, will cause sort of bring us to very interesting uh, phenomena and, of course, control capabilities. Here's a, a list of uh, polar molecules uh, created approximately at uh, temperatures below one milli, uh, microkelvin. So explanation why we would expect uh, interesting phenomena uh, could be due to the fact that the Broglie wavelengths uh, at this kind of temperature is huge. Uh, on this graph, you can see uh, that uh, at temperatures uh, at a few nanokelvin, the De Broglie uh, wavelengths is around uh, millimeters. So, and of course, uh, uh, quantum effects would promote quantum tunneling and quantum threshold effects. One of the most interesting questions now, uh, how chemical reaction proceed uh, at uh, temperature near absolute zero? And uh, this question is not hypothetical anymore uh, because uh, Ultra-cold molecules uh, in uh, quantum degenerate, actually, uh, gases of, uh, of fault molecules uh, are already created uh, in a number of experiments. And uh, uh, chemical reaction with these gases was studied. And the first time, it was uh, experiment by Gila group in 2010. Uh, and then recently, uh, they repeated this experiment with, with much uh, higher, better conditions uh, when they consider identical uh, ferromionic potassium rubidium molecules, uh, and they measure uh, reaction rate coefficients, uh, and they're apparently proportional to temperature, that, which is predicted by uh, Wigner threshold law for P-wave collisions. And uh, this behavior shown here by uh, red markers, and uh, it corresponds uh, pretty good to predictions of quantum defect theory. Uh, even more, quantum statistics uh, play a role when they even increase, decrease temperature, increase density of molecules, and uh, behavior uh, uh, these uh, blue uh, markers show um, that reaction even more suppressed uh, uh, in these conditions. However, suppression uh, rate coefficients do not exist when we consider uh, collisions between molecules and atoms. So quantum statistics allow uh, transitions uh, uh, using S-wave scattering. So uh, in the experiment, uh, 
which investigated uh, molecule atom collisions, we, we can see that rates about 100 times higher, uh, larger than what the previous slide showing. So it's approximately 10 to minus 10 centimeter cube for second. So another experiment uh, was performed using a sodium lithium molecule in triplet sigma state in absolute uh, vibrational rotational state colliding with lithium. And also preliminary, they estimated a rate also the same order of magnitude. And there is some information about uh, theoretical uh, estimate, even using uh, universal rates. Uh, and uh, on this graph, you can see that uh, predictions uh, by universal rate uh, agree somehow, not, not very exactly agree, but not far away uh, with experimental measurements. Um, and it means that uh, the reactions of uh, alkali metal molecules with atoms uh, uh, most likely uh, near universal uh, when almost all molecules going to react and uh, atom exchange process happen uh, and only a small part of molecules return back or you know, collide uh, uh, elastically. So, however, measurements and also predictions by quantum defect models uh, do not describe intermediate scattering complex, uh, what happening during this reaction, and it do not predict raw vibration product distribution. And the uh, importance of these reactions uh, initiate our interest to look at that more precise method using more accurate methods. So here's a, uh, a simple diagram describing um, different uh, simulation tools used uh, in ke quantum chemistry for uh, solving reactions, uh, and the uh, yellow color indicates uh, like uh, classically chemical, uh, classical reactions, uh, which include the uh, REACTS FF method and molecular dynamics method. Um, but uh, there are sort of major tools uh, for quantum. Uh, mechanical methods uh, which include wave packet method and uh, couple channel method. So wave packet normally time dependent and couple channel time independent method. But however, uh, wave packet method um, doesn't work well for now for ultra cold reactions because wave packet uh, is so ba big uh, for very low temperatures, so practically we cannot um, identify initial state or final state. Uh, that's the purpose of, of the, the study to understand how actual reaction going. So uh, I would say for now we only have one option is Campo channels method, which. Uh, works in, for low temperatures and pretty simple, not very large molecules. So here um, I will be talking about uh, our method and, and this work performed in collaboration with a group of uh, Balan Duval and uh, uh, Brian Kendrick from Lund. So this is exact quantum mechanical method. It, it's uh, called EQM method. Uh, that allows uh, atoms and molecules rotate, uh, well, molecules, but mostly 
rotate, vibrate, and it has a six-dimensional scattering wave function um, in hyperspherical coordinates. So uh, most of the uh, hyper radius are solved uh, in a short range and intermediate range between atom molecule, uh, but asymptotic boundary conditions used in Jacobi coordinate in order to determine scattering matrix and state-to-state uh, -state reaction rates. First, uh, in my talk, I will uh, talk um, about one reaction uh, using born Amperheimer approximation, and then later I will switch uh, to our new approach using beyond born upper a bone Oppenheimer approximation, where we have to use several or two, in this case, uh, potential services which uh, interact uh, and uh, cross each other and have a conical intersection. So, uh, as I mentioned, um, this method uh, is practically possible to use for uh, small enough molecules. Uh, even for small molecules, what we wanted to consider, uh, it is still a very um, daunting, uh, difficult, challenging problem. Uh, first of all, ultra-cold collisions are very sensitive to details of the potentials and long range is very important. Uh, and secondly, um, these systems have very deep potentials and many uh, reaction channels, a few thousand normally. So, and the computational cost scales very fast with increase of channels. So, the first um, reaction is uh, potassium rubidium. Uh, colliding with constituent potassium atom. Uh, and, uh, of course, potassium will be the molecule in absolute ground state. Uh, so here's, uh, on the left, uh, energetics of this reaction. Uh, so we start from V equals zero, J equals zero of potassium rubidium. And then uh, we have uh, like free vibrational states available, and of course many rotational states could be occupied. So this uh, gray area indicates uh, many rotational states. So here, first of course, we map up the uh, three-dimensional trimer potentials using, uh, in this case, uh, MRCI method, because in principle we did calculate two surfaces, but now I talk about born up and harm approximation in one surface. Uh, and there, uh, uh, here is a, like an example I show this surface uh, in uh, collinear geometry. In this uh, geometry, you can see entrance and exit kind of channel. Um, and uh, uh, in uh, calculation of potential surface, we pay a spe specific attention to uh, short-range free body, known as the additive term. Um, it could be uh, important, and we want to understand how important. And then, of course, we uh, very carefully created long-range interactions, actually um, doing this way that um, first we calculate ab initio, pairwise potential, and then uh, we uh, subtracted it from the full ab uh, initio potential and added instead uh, long range trimer pairwise potentials which we created from um, very well-known uh, dimer potentials uh, 
um, which uh, uh, check, you know, uh, formed from spectroscopic data. So here's the total reaction rates on the upper uh, graph. And uh, so here we compare uh, reaction rates for S-ray collisions at so a, a very low uh, collision energy range. Uh, and uh, black curve shows uh, uh, full uh, calculation with full potential and the red curve with uh, pairwise potential. And we see that rates are pretty close. So it's again tell us that free body part of the uh, this system uh, collisional complex uh, is small and, and possibly not very important. Uh, and here's the state-to-state -state distributions when we see that the V equals zero uh, operational uh, distributions are uh, largest and then after that V equals one and two. So here I just compare uh, exact calculation with uh, universal rate for S-wave, for example, collisions. And so they totally agree for the, but for uh, low temperatures. On this uh, slide, I, I show rate coefficients in the function, function of rotation quantum numbers for product uh, molecule, potassium-2, uh, again, with and without three-body part. So blue uh, bars show uh, full potential calculation and red without three-body part. So in spite of the fact that three-body part not really large, uh, important for total reaction rate, but uh, the distribution of in product molecule uh, totally unrelated when we put free body part in or out. So the conclusion here that actually it has to be included, it has to be calculated not by pairwise potentials if you want to know more accurately the distributions in the product molecule. Here's a just a confirmation of this. We, we plot probability distribution as a function of um, scaled uh, reaction rate. Uh, and then you actually use different temperatures and they all lie on exponential line showing independence, random distribution. Here now I go to the case when we look beyond born Oppenheim approximations. And actually, uh, in quantum chemistry, um, this approximation uh, is like non born Oppenheim approximation is actually uh, very important. In, in many cases, uh, uh, coupling between rotational motion and nuclear motion become uh, quite strong and therefore you have to include it. In case of two uh, three atoms or more atoms, so larger molecules, um, uh, in, in this case, uh, different potentials could uh, interact due to um, non-adiabatic coupling between them and even have conical interception. So uh, conditions under which just going to those sections are uh, investigated very well uh, in um, much higher temperature phys uh, chemistry where they normally use uh, wave packet approach or hopping mechanism. But I already told you that uh, here we cannot use these approaches, unfortunately which are developed very easily 
uh, easy, and they can actually find codes, and it's much more easy. But this is the uh, only way we can do right now. It's again using time independent uh, calculations. So here we started to do uh, uh, this um, investigation uh, using a lighter uh, systems. And then next step will be potassium rubidium plus potassium with two surfaces. We already prepared this uh, in, in investigation. So, um, but uh, fortunately, we, right now we started from single sigma lithium sodium molecules. The next step could be triplet sigma in order to uh, compare our results with predictions by Catterley group. Uh, here we look, of course, it's a little bit more simple case. Um, so here's a potential services, uh, doublet A, doublet B, and they cross in this line. And uh, they are shown exactly in, in specific symmetry, C to V symmetry. Uh, where uh, they could cross. And, and this crossing, it's a line, uh, and it's called uh, at the seam of CI, and uh, it's shown here on the graph as a function of R, which is uh, when R1 and R2 equal. Uh, uh, it is this energy, and we compared location of this uh, the seam with uh, entrance channel energy. So it's actually going through. So you cannot say uh, conic intersection somewhere, so we may include it or not. We use geometric phase, not. Here we have to include it directly in our equations, uh, coupling between these two surfaces. Uh, so very important moment in order to uh, do dynamics we have to diabetize surfaces. Uh, of course, we know all that uh, uh, calculations, um, electronic structure calculations give us adiabatic surfaces. But uh, in case if uh, the surfaces interact, we have to uh, diabetize them and, and then use it in dynamics. Uh, it, it, it's a convenient and it, it's important for different reasons. So, but first we calculate non-adiabatic coupling between surfaces. Uh, and then uh, this coupling, uh, this is adiabatic uh, energies. Uh, and then it depends on the mixing angle, which is we calculate uh, using uh, calculating gradients uh, of the potential surface for different geometries. So uh, I show one example only, but of course we have for all geometries uh, when theta angle uh, equals 60 degrees, when actually you can see conic intersection. And so how you can def identify it when uh, mixing angle drops perpendicular, uh, this is conic intersection. Uh, so why we have so many uh, so, uh, lines or uh, curves, it's just for different R1. This is function of R2, but, but you change also R1, it will be many curves, because uh, we change all geometries and uh, distance rho, uh, all together. So here's the result. Uh, here's a total reaction rate first uh, on this graph. So uh, red curve, again, it's for S-way uh, collisions for low temperatures. Uh, here, S-way collision shows total rate, which agree well, as I already said, for potassium rubidium, but for lithium uh, sodium plus lithium also uh, universal kind of, uh, but when you include conic intersection, uh, then it becomes uh, 
orange line. Uh, so the rate is just increased 1.2 times. Okay. Not maybe huge change, but there is. So then here we looked at the state-to-state uh, -state distribution force. First, vibration distribution. And each vibrational curve include, of course, distribution within uh, mm -hmm. Uh, within uh, a vibrational level, all rotational states, it's, it's summation over. And uh, here for this reaction, of course, we have four now vibrational states could be occupied uh, and some rotational states too. So, but here we see a very unexpected uh, effect. So uh, if we uh, look at three different graphs, and the first graph shows uh, distributions uh, for even and odd uh, rotational states uh, within uh, vibrational states. Uh, and they are um, using just uh, pairwise potential. And we, we can see there's no big difference. They are the same order of not only magnitude, but also kind of um, almost equal, a little bit different. Uh, but then we look at uh, uh, this three, uh, calculation when we include three body part. Uh, and then even one surface or two surfaces, uh, then uh, uh, odd symmetry is very much suppressed. So it's almost two order of magnitude suppression. So distribution is still different when we have a conical intersection or no conical intersection, but suppression in both cases are uh, visible. Uh, here, uh, rotational distributions, and again, very funny, this is uh, uh, suppressed uh, for odd J's uh, and the distribution they're not different, smaller, bigger, but there are big, uh, actually very wide resonances uh, there. Um, and so conclusion here uh, that um, suppression most likely, not because geometric phase, eff phase effect, but due to three-body uh, non-additive contribution. So it changes potential certain way that it's uh, 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 start to suppress. And we, we now uh, investigate it more uh, by just uh, putting factor in front of free body part and recalculating each time we look how it will change uh, to understand better. And now uh, we look at the statistics uh, uh, analyzing adiabatic potentials. Here is uh, with free body, without three body, potentials are different. Uh, it's kind of um, more uh, two kind of two well potentials here. Uh, his upper low potential uh, and uh, this cone states as well. So when we analyze this potential density, like uh, near density, near neighbor uh, level spacing distribution. Uh, as a function of um, the scale spacing, then uh, uh, for short uh, row, uh, points lie uh, on uh, almost Wigner Dyson distribution, not exactly, but very close. Uh, it means they avoid each other. There's a, a interaction between different channels at short distance. Uh, and then we we'll go further away than they rather lie on the Parson line. Uh, when in, no, they don't interact, they don't care, they could cross even. So, uh, and the presence of chaos in this reaction uh, may have very important implication uh, for ultra-cold chemistry because uh, reaction become extremely sensitive to little changes, and so it will affect uh, the product distribution. Um, if I have one minute, I can tell that we studied uh, reactions between uh, atom molecules for two different cases, 
So uh, we determine multidimensional driver potentials, uh, and we found that in both cases there are conical intersection between them. And so we perform close coupling calculations in hyperspherical coordinate, and total reaction rates uh, show uh, that um, CI actually increase reaction rate, and then, of course, uh, there's suppression for D wave, uh, I'm not D wave, it's D um, for the odd uh, rotational states in product molecule, uh, which we still uh, try to understand in more details. It's certainly due to free body contribution. So, and then we also analyze uh, density of uh, the reaction channels and, and found uh, in both cases, actually, I didn't show for other case, uh, that at uh, a small uh, hyper radius, uh, it is always uh, chaotic. And then if you go further to uh, product or entrance channel, uh, then we we have Poisson distribution. And this is uh, our uh, group members. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So, something we did about um, 2006, I think, mm -hmm. was to do um, first coupling calculations of elastic and inelastic cross sections on a few systems lithium plus lithium dimer, mm -hmm. potassium plus potassium dimer. Um, and then we tried varying the potential just by a scaling factor, but because we were doing it that way, we could vary the potential very smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, and look at how the elastic and inelastic cross sections changed as we varied that scaling factor. Mm -hmm. And what we found in lithium, for example, mm -hmm. uh, is that things changed by an order of magnitude well, several times across a 1% change in the potential. Uh, and, and what you get for any particular potential is, is almost random. Mm -hmm. Although as we go to, went to greater kinetic energy releases, things became smoother and closer to universal. So something I'm wondering with what you talked about, you talk about the importance of including the three body effects. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder if you could actually look at these properties as a function of the fraction of three body effects. That That's what we are doing now. Are, mm -hmm. you know, are many, many times one percent. <laughs> no, no, that's what we are doing now. Okay, because I suspect yeah, that's that they're important. going to go up and down many times between the, the, the potential without three body and the potential with three body, and that actually what you've got are just two points on, on an almost random. Well, uh, I may not agree right now. Uh, I think there is a structures within the. Uh, short range potential, trimer potential, which could affect uh, this rate. But you're totally right that all these ab initial calculations not very exact, even you use a couple cluster calculation. Uh, and uh, um, you can change, uh, move around. Uh, so you don't know what to do, right? Yeah. We say how we done it, and it's the best approach we can do right now. And uh, of course, we wait results from experiment, and already there are signs that it it will come, maybe soon. Uh, now it's about uh, two molecules colliding, but maybe uh, sometimes would be molecule atom collisions. As you change the potential, you're squeezing states out of the yeah. No, I know. We try, we try, not in this case, in some other case, we've done it. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's another question. Um, thank you for having talk. I find it very interesting that you have this uh, parity suppression of, um, yeah. in, in, in the sodium lithium case. Mm -hmm. um, is there any intuition to why it doesn't happen in the potassium rubidium case? Does geometric phase in this case play? Um, 
So that was idea maybe because atom molecule, because of lithium, atom molecule, uh, the reduced mass almost the same when it's lithium present. And it, there is some kind of uh, uh, so precedence in chemistry uh, when there's suppression of so, certain symmetry uh, when this happened. So, but uh, we have to understand that. So it's certainly two order of magnitude, very significant. Uh, so maybe it's a fact or uh, so. And potassium rubidium, yeah, accidentally shown a graph here. It's potassium rubidium, actually. Uh, this is even a naught, uh, full potential. It's not pairwise. So not they are different, right? Not similar what sodium lithium shows. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That was previous. Uh, so, so you expect similar thing to happen? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's paralyzed, right? It goes away. So it's kind of something within the complex. Uh, some reach maybe, or normally we don't have barrier, right? But there could be some kind of structures that could create this. But again, like Jeremy said, you have to be sure that it's real things, right? Yeah. All right, so one last question. If not, then let's thank all speakers and say bye.